Hi friends, how's it going? Journey here. So today I'm going to be going over a replay. So in this replay I'm going to be going over Phantom Assassin. The notes they gave me was how to not feed, was Battle Fury okay, and how to not get picked off like such a moron. I uh... I'm not too sure what to say for that. The last part, but like, Battle Fury, we will uh, have to see if it's a good game or not. Typically when you want Battle Fury, it's because you're the harder carry of the two on your team. In this game, yeah, you probably have to solo carry the game. Your Sniper Ninja's Profit are going to feed their minds out. Is that a Core Profit or a Support Profit? I'm pretty sure it's a Core Profit, right? Yeah. So Profit's going to feed his mind out to the mass takeoff potential of Legion Commander Storm Spirit, and eventually more things is going to destroy him. Same thing with Earthshaker. Earthshaker, like, these four heroes are set up to kill the Backliners really, really easily. So you kind of have to go Battle Fury, in my opinion, to uh, look to outscale their team. Which is very hard, because their team scales very well. Kind of just trashes you. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the game, I think. And see what you could have done better, because getting picked off a lot... It's not very good on a carry. Especially when you're looking at their draft. And like, as soon as I see this draft, the first thing I mentioned was uh, how much pickoff potential they have. Typically, if a draft has a lot of pickoff potential, they lack team fight. The dire team has one team fight spell in the uh, Echo Slam. They have no other AoE disables. They kind of have damage early, but their draft takes a long time to get online. If you guys. Like, just win the lane super hard, you either skip Battle Fury and go straight Deso and just like force fights off of that, or you can go Battle Fury to try out scaling them, as I said. You can look to uh, win off of that. Man, you guys had four Satanics, holy crap. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, take a look at what you could have done. But just understanding how their draft is going to play out is very important going into a game. Okay. So, we are now in the game. The starting items, you really want one more tango. I, uh... One of the biggest issues people have, especially carry players, in like sub 3k games, is they never ever buy enough regen. Go with, like, Earthshaker is not going to pressure you, that's, uh, that's fine, you don't really care about him. But Legion Commander as a hero is going to just destroy you guys, because the Crystal Maiden is never going to threaten Legion. And a uh, PA trading hits with a Legion Commander isn't going to go too well for you if you don't have enough regen. If Legion Commander has six tangos in the south and you have three tangos in the south, you're just going to be eventually out damage because she has press the attack and she has movement of courage. So she has way higher health regen, higher attack speed, and uh, life steal. On top of the fact that you're going to feed her a lot of stick charges when she buys a stick. So. You really want to keep your regen pool high. Like right now, this trade is very unfavorable for you. Because you only have three tangos in one salve. You either have to use both these iron branches for a uh, double tango effect. Or you have to consume literally all of your tangos to go back to full health. And you, you keep taking this trade. Very bad. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't trade hits with a team that does way higher damage than you when you don't have enough regen. Because now you have one tango... You're going to consume the tango as soon as this tango is done, and now you have no regen. And you're against the legion commander who's going to be non-stop training hits with you. And a shaker, and shaker's going to, assuming shaker's smart, he's going to fissure block and pull the wave back so it's under legion commander's tower. And when that happens, you're going to be even farther forward, so legion commander is going to be able to hit you more, and for a longer duration of time. So, number one way of uh, salvaging this lane, because you've already botched it, is buying regen. My regen win games. I'm not even joking. We'll fast forward a bit because I, I don't think I'm going to focus too much on the landing phase. I feel like this lane is going to be very Legion Commander heavy because their uh, off lane is kind of better than your safe lane. And, uh. Yeah. I really can say about that. Like, even here. So, uh. Why not tank that death? What What is the problem with dying here? How, like, you have 103 health, 4 mana. Are you going to be pressuring this Legion Commander without mana? No. When you pop yourself, what happens? You have no health regen, obviously. 
you're not you know for a fact you're not calling it in you can see your curry at the, the tier two down here right it's going to take too long to either walk back here or ideally even walk back here by the time you respawn and give you this and buy more tangos but you already got the better of the, of the trade so why not just walk this tower and kill yourself to it so it splits the gold 50 50 legion committer gets full xp and then you reset yourself you come back full health full mana and a south now you're going to assume your south doesn't get broken which it should because legion commander is like 25 moves faster yeah 25 she's 330 base you're 305 so she's going to catch you assuming she has no level in her q which i believe you know i think she's propped both of these spells already so uh she's going to catch you and break your south at some point so you're getting like half a duration of south and now you have no health and no mana So dying right there would have been more optimal because now you're gonna have to go back to base or die and you just wasted a self now you're calling it tangos these tangos are very late you're right there you, you could have daggered to a uh, secure creep if you had mana okay see i'm had a salve but still uh you've used two salves and a tango but probably in my opinion would have been better off just dying i uh wouldn't have an issue with you just hinting yourself into the tower resetting your health and mana as i said you're giving legion commander level three off of that death but like you can't pressure this legion commander with no mana because she has spells and she's a full health full mana shaker you guys are consumed 250 gold 220 from foul 30 from a tango to uh compete in the lane you could have spent 90 gold on the tp not even 90 gold, it was three three of them for free but uh Hypothetically, we could have spent 90 gold to come back to lane in a bit of XP. That is my opinion, though. But, uh, obviously, it's hard to determine when it's good to die and when it's not good to die. I think I'll keep fast forwarding through this because this should just be you attempting to AFK farm. I would never personally be getting aggressive on these guys, as I said. You don't really trade hits very well with them if they uh, play it properly. I'm just gonna keep fast forwarding. And then again, out of regen. Because uh, you keep taking trades when you don't have enough regen. At this point, like, kind of to determine, like, wh what build am I going for? Am I farming well enough that I can go for this uh, Battle Fury build and get it at a reasonable time? You know, maybe. I mean, this, this getting that Ring of Health will actually help you sustain your lane and let you trade hits with them, which is what you're determined to do. Like, if you have a Blightstone as well, you could be looking to get aggressive early. I think I'd be leaning more towards a Desolator now that I think about it. Or like now that I'm seeing the lane play, I don't even think about it. I think my initial point still stands of uh, you having a solo carry of the game because your draft is pretty heavily countered. There you go. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying, is this, uh, I'd be leaning more towards Desolator right now to see how the game is going. Only reason I would go for a battle for you is if I really valued that uh, ring of health. Nice. That was a good kill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this, is, this isn't bad. I mean, your game's recovered. You're 3 1 and 0. 50 last hits, 11 minutes in. I don't really see why you're trying to farm an ancient stack to be or an ancient camp, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Wave is already there. You just revealed a ward, by the way. And you blinked into where you knew that they were. Both of those are mistakes. So, uh... Just a small tip for any... Any players out there. If, you need to be more mindful of how you protect your wards. Right here, you need to pretend that you have no vision of them. Okay, no, that's not true. You need to pretend that you only see this little bar here. You just blinked blind into that camp. They can assume that you, or they know the for a fact you have a vision like a ward in that area and it goes through process of elimination what ward placement can you have on this camp that the where can it be pretty much so because you blinked here the ward can't be over here right because that wouldn't give you vision and over here might might work as a decent ward spot but not likely because not much benefit of that so the ward is probably just going to be in this area here. So that, that should be dewarded instantly because all oh, it's one minute left, it's still gold you're feeding because you revealed the ward. 
So learning how to protect your words a lot better. Like that goes to anybody, not just uh, carry players or just like sports or whatever. Every single player has to learn to protect their words. Because uh, it's very bad to give them up. Like it's free gold, free XP. At some times, like yeah, it's fine to reveal a word if it keeps you alive or gets you a kill. But like, in that case, you just traded what should have been a uh, observer word, D word, for Volcan. That's not very good. Now you go back to health. It's the biggest issue you've been having so far is lack of regen. Buy more regen and your game is significantly easier. If you uh, do that, then you're like, just in a lot better of a spot. I also, just for a small efficiency thing, I don't see much value in farming this camp here. Because it's uh, going to take you too long to kill this and move before it stacks, why not farm this, push it into the tier 1 tower, and then you can farm that and that. This camp will still be here for 55 more seconds, right? But because you're gone, you just missed out on like, maybe 2, 3 creeps. And not even that, you're not creating pressure. You know for a fact that Legion Commander showed mid lane, same thing with the uh, Earthshaker. So why not punish them for that move by pushing them to tier 1 tower? Even if you're not there hitting it, the creeps are going to do like, 100 damage, and you force them to TP back bottom. You just, you just let Legion Commander get away with a really big play. They just killed your Nictus Prophet for free, you got dual damage. And not a single bit of damage or gold has been lost. If that creep wave was into the tier 1, it denies like, let's say 4 creeps. But that's 4 creeps of gold and XP she's getting 0 of from. That's very bad for Legion. Instead of being level 9.5, she'd be like level 9. That's not very fun. You don't want to be half a level lower. So, uh, learn to, like right now, I would be, uh, You farm this? Yeah, I think this is kind of okay. This is like a small thing, but like right here, I feel like I'd be better off pushing the lane. Because Legion Commander is going to be going elsewhere for boundaries and whatnot. I would probably prefer to push the lane and then go to farm a jungle. Like that's a small efficiency thing, but in my opinion, I value creating pressure over efficiency right now. Because I know Legion Commander is looking to make plays on the map, and if I'm pushing a tier 1 tower in the off lane. I give Prophet that option of TP being bottom to take a tower. If you give your team options, you have more things to do. But again, right here. It took you too long to uh, pressure the tower to the point where they rotated on you. Th this shouldn't have happened. You should have had that tower or, or the creep wave already into their tower, and then you could have uh, been farming jungle. And this gank never would have happened. Even if you don't doubt, which I'm pretty confident you do. Damn, that's a really good throw. I'm gonna do one though. Unfortunate, but yeah. But that's an entirely because you took the greedy route instead of the uh, pressure route. You cost your team both you and profit. That's just my opinion, though. I, uh. Might be because I'm not a carry player, but I do value pressure over efficiency. But I believe in that case, the, the pressure would have been way more important than the efficiency. Also, farming their jungle is very difficult right now. Your hero is not very strong. And that area is where Storm Spirit and Morphling are going to be playing. One of those two cores, if they're not showing top or mid, will be in that jungle. So you probably should be farming your jungle right now. Like if you wanted to, you could be farming these camps up here. And then as this lane pushes back like into your tier 1 tower like this, once it hits like this line like right here, then you can look to uh, come de-push. But I think for right now, you're better off farming like, yeah, this, this camp's fine to farm because you're under a ward. But primarily these three camps are my uh, go-to place. Bottom lane's a bit hard to go to since you give up the tier 1 tower. That's uh, understandable. And then at this point, this is where like Battle Fury kind of sucks for you to have gone for. Just because a 21 minute Battle Fury is kind of garbage. Right? Like it's... Uh, It's going to take you a while to make that battle three become of use in terms of uh, in terms of gold increase. Like you spent, what, four, 5k gold, let's say. How long until you can round out that 5k gold and make that 5k gold make your GPM high enough to match out the battle fury, you know? Or justify the battle fury, I should say. 
Like, taking this outpost is kind of pointless. You're just, you're just inviting pressure onto you. It's a 22 minute outpost. Instead of going for that outpost, wouldn't it have made more sense to either, like, walk down over here and get ready to form these triangles? Or, like, blur in and push up this wave, and when somebody comes, you, like, go run away. That would be suicide, but, like, that's a better option. Or, like, go mid and defend this mid tier 1 and have your team make a play bottom or top. It's really, uh, point like, really, really pointless for you to be pressing this outpost eight minutes before it even has a use. Because your team is not controlling their jungle. There's no point of having a TP access point. You're not going to defend it, right? You're just making your Battle Fury timing even worse now because this is 30 seconds a minute of you having Battle Fury that you're not farming. Which means Battle Fury is an even worse choice. Like, you being up here, fine. I'd blur so they can't, uh, a lot less likely to see you, to be honest. But that's just my opinion. Like, right now, I'll be able to work, you see all of them bottom, I would be, because I have a battle for you, either pressuring top tower, or working my way to farm mid. I'd probably be taking top tower, because it's very low. But, uh, then I'm going to start working my way back towards my half of the map. Their entire team will be TPing top and mid, to defend that uh, push from Mars. So start working my way back towards mid-bottom. Like, uh, like you can farm here, then you can farm here, and slowly work my way down, and then eventually make my way to this area here, and push this lane to, like, here. And then I can TP back top, because their whole team's going to be moving bottom. And then, uh, pressure that. It's like, keep cycling through that of, a uh, when you're a Battle Fury carrier, you need to be relieving pressure and creating pressure. Not really about much else at this point. If you have the fight happening right by you, you can, you can hover near this fight, but you cannot commit into the fight. Because you have no damage and you have no survivability. You can sit back and throw a dagger or two, but you go for this courier snipes, you probably die, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the... Question mark, man. Question mark by your own team. A lot of the issues you're facing and why you keep feeding is because you're just not playing with how you, uh... are building, in terms of itemization. If you went Deso uh, BKB there, you could totally do that fight, and you would probably have won that fight for your team. But you won Battle Fury. If you want to be taking a fight, sit back and chuck daggers, and then when the uh, it looks optimal, then you can join in. Right now, you're, you're walking into what you know is probably three or four heroes. You don't know how many for sure. And then you don't have any way of fighting them. Like, you die, you respawn, you tp and now this is still you not hitting creeps. You're not getting kills, so because of that you're not getting gold. Your GPM's like 400 at best right now. 404. Yeah. So just, uh, I can't see split push base line, or, uh, like, very run at you, gank your base lineups. Play off of your blur, go push out a lane. I'd be showing one more wave right here, and then leaving. Even one wave's a bit risky. Just because I showed bottom, I can, uh, do that. But, like... Now I'll be working my way towards top lane, because they're still showing bottom. I do not want to go for this mid tier 2. If you stay in that mid top jungle area, because it, their next play will be running for this uh, tower here. They're going to control this, assume they're smart. They're going to control this area here and try taking that, that uh, mid tier 2. So I'll be going towards top lane to try pushing this into their tier 3, so I can buy my team a better time. Like right now... I mean, probably shouldn't be profit TPing into this. Oh, there's a shaker up there. Damn. There goes the echo. I guess it's a good thing you didn't show that wave, but uh. Damn, that's rough. And yeah, at this point, Battle Fury is kind of bit you in the ass. Bit too hard. Your uh, your fight contribution is non-existent. Very smart that you changed to BKB instead of Battle Fury. That was very good. But like, oh, why would you play that way? Your biggest issue is that you're just kind of letting them walk at you, and you're not doing enough to uh, like you and Profit to be split pushing. Right now, where are you? You're you're sitting high ground. Go run at bottom. Push that lane out. 
and do it under blur because you know they're the top. And as soon as they go missing, you back off. You go hide in the trees, you go TP elsewhere, you do whatever you can to survive. So if you split push them, you're going to force them to uh, split up themselves. And their draft is very good at picking you off when you're alone. But like, don't ever overcommit onto a wave. Never try to minimize how much you show on the map. That's why I'm saying you have to be pung off of Blur. Because Blur makes it a lot harder for them to see you. You have to be actively looking at that spot on the map. Like farming here is pretty risky because they probably have a ward on you. If I was... Yeah, they had they saw you up there. If I was to ever from that area, I'd do it under blur. Or instead of farming jungle, because uh as I've mentioned, you want to be creating pressure, I'd be farming top lane or bottom lane, trying to make them come to me, and then as I as they TP in, I've already left because I've uh read their movement. Yeah, if you blink in like that you gotta be KB. North of just killed himself. Cool. Damn. Yeah. A, a lot of the issues right here is just, uh, like, you said how to not feed. Just learn to read enemy movements. Like, try to ask yourself, if I am them, how can I stop this? Like, right now, instead of you being at this high ground defense, you have a TP, right? Go run bottom under blur, push his lane up to, like, here. Other team's like, yo, PA, get the hell over here. You then TP in and fight them because they've dove, or like, you have a better chance of fighting. You don't need to be at the start of a fight as a PA before BKB or before a damage item. Once your BKB comes, then you can look to start joining fights a bit better. You have literally two items 30 minutes in. You are not feeling strong right now at all. And rightly so, you're not strong in the slightest. Your hero's incredibly weak. You know that. So try to create some sort of pressure by like, pushing one wave, being like, are they on the map? If Storm Spirit goes missing and Legion Commander goes missing, they're running at you, 100%. Go hide in the trees, keep you out, do whatever. What I would recommend doing is, uh, as they keep saying, go to a lane. Right now, I'd be probably farming jungle because all the lanes are a bit too far out for you to go. But their next play probably is going to be at Roshan. If they're going for Roshan, I probably just want to play bottom lane. Like, whenever his lane comes, just push out that, uh, into their tier 1. This TP, TP by Legion Commander is awful. Because it shows that they're not in Roshan, so it means that you guys can play top uh, top lane area because they're not going to be playing away from Lincoln to it. So, uh... Buys you a bit more time that, with that Legion TP. But right, right now, like, just go shove a lane. And as soon as they go missing, like, Storm Spirit Legion just showed uh, bottom jungle, go fight. Go quickly shove this lane mid. Shoving it, yep. And I start walking towards Arcade and sho shove this sleeve. And now go sh uh, run mid, or top of mid. Ooh, that was not good. You need a TP. TP. They're gonna keep chasing you. Oh, Storm has no mana. You're totally gonna have Storm had mana. Wait, not yet, Mars there. Yeah, they just stayed a bit too long. That's the issue with you, uh. Thanks for that one extra wave. And then because you didn't leave. Got caught and died. If you have no BKB, you can't fight. So although I keep saying it, just to recap, like, if you are super, super under-farmed, or feel very unimpactful in a game, you need to find a way of making impact. Go, uh, push your lane. And then, hide in the trees until they give you more information. And they give you enough information because they're showing... The ganker heroes, in this case, leave Commander Storm Spirit on the map, then you can reshow yourself. Either in a different lane by TPing or by uh, hiding in the trees. Like, you can sit bottom lane essentially forever. You just hide in the trees down here, and then when they show on the map, you can either TP out or you can walk back and push this lane. Your biggest, like, biggest problem right now is you just haven't split pushed them nearly enough. You guys, uh, you learn to split push properly and read the map better, the game's pretty easy for you. Because instead of having 410 GPM, you're at 610 GPM. It means you have one more item. You have your Desolator by now. Do that and this game becomes significantly 
going to keep fast forward because this is a long game actually. I'm just going to fast forward to the Roche fight that has to happen soon. Now that's the biggest concern. Yeah, this is fine. What you're doing right now is fine because they're not showing Legion Commander or Storm. You don't need to know. This TP sucks. This TP is awful. Your team is going to alleviate that pressure or relieve that pressure mid. You don't need to be there. You can TP in when the fight starts, when the Legion Commander blinks in and duels, when Storm Spirit zips in, when they blink Echo, whatever. You can then join. You have no reason to be here. You have five heroes here. Instead of doing that, go shove out top lane and keep pushing it in. And when it, the lane is like in this area here, you can more effectively read their movements. Because if no one's responding to the creep wave that's in this little circle I'm drawing here, it means they're making a play. You know, that's Roshan, which they just did, running at your bottom, running at mid, whatever. Like, the biggest problem, as I keep saying, is not making any sort of uh, pressure. Pressure lanes, you win games. And then it wasn't even a Roche fight. And the, the, you guys didn't know about Roshan because when you guys have shit vision, too, you guys weren't positioned for that for whatever reason. Even it was super obvious to happen. And uh, three, because you guys weren't pressuring lanes enough. If you pressure lanes, you can read the map better. You know for a fact where their team is and where their team isn't. If you know where they aren't and you know where they are, you can make better reads at what to do. You can better read that they, hey, top lane's hitting their tier 3. Let's scan Roshan. You scan Roshan, nothing's in there. You're like, okay, they're running at me bottom jungle or top jungle then. And then try to assume which jungle they're going to. Like, try to recognize to yourself which one would be more realistic. Probably top jungle, because that's where you guys should be playing. And three heroes are dead. Stop hitting nukes. Go hit lane creeps. Push out a lane. Create pressure. Create pressure to, to relieve pressure. Create, like, you farming this camp right here is doing nothing. Instead of farming that camp there, farm this wave, wave up here, farm that camp, then farm this wave. That's two waves, you're creating pressure, and you got the same amount of gold from that hard camp. Right? You just took, you just took the three biggest kills you could have got, the three biggest kills you guys have had in this game, and you got a hard camp kill and an outpost. A small camp. Oh, sick. If you guys get all these, all three lanes out, then they're gonna have to either split up, which they're gonna do because this bracket, the people are gonna split up to go farm that wave. And when they split up, you kill them again, and you just open the game wide open, because their teams very much apart. Then again, here, don't go aggressive, go defensive. This is kind. Of, this is super fucking risky, dude. They're uh, they're not showing anything on the map right now. You have no idea where's like who's where. Well, Storm just killed himself. Taking spider legs over leveler. I think you want leveler. I uh. You don't really need spider legs if you have Link. Yeah, this game is pretty much won now. They uh, they're throwing super hard. I think I'll call it off that then. There's a uh, not much else I feel like I can discuss because a lot of this game just I, I don't want to keep saying it, but like your team just plays the map horribly and. A lot of it is on you. If you're playing Battle Fury PA, you have to relieve pressure on the map. It is your job and Nature's Prophet's job to be hitting uh, creep waves. Like, Storm Spirit just died, and you guys have one wave that went past the river. That, that, that can't happen. That has to be all three lanes going past the river, and then you make a play. Yeah, I think I'll cut off that. If you got any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, or you can DM me on Discord. If not, I'll see everybody later.